wisdom of 101 famous poems. Spoken and with commentary by E. T. Hansen. Trees by Joyce Kilmer. I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree, a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast, a tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray, a tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair, upon whose bosom snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. Joyce Kilmer was an American poet and one of the most popular writers and lecturers of his time. He was born in New Brunswick, New Jersey, to the physician who invented baby powder for Johnson & Johnson. He was named Alfred Joyce after two priests who were close to the family, one of whom had Joyce as the last name. Kilmer received his bachelor's from Columbia University in New York, and during that time he successfully became a professional writer. Not only that, he quickly became an immensely popular poet and lecturer. Upon graduation, he married Aline Murray, also an accomplished poet, with whom he had five children. When his daughter Rose died at five years of age, he converted to Catholicism. A few days after the United States entered World War I in 1917, Kilmer volunteered and was deployed to France. Though he could have stayed out of battle, he sought out hazardous duty and wrote home to his wife that he was thrilled by the work of soldiering. He was killed by a sniper's bullet at the Second Battle of the Marne on a volunteer scouting mission at the age of 31. Kilmer often wrote about the beauty of the natural world and his Roman Catholic faith, though his poetry was often criticized as conventional and simplistic, by the time he enlisted he was considered the leading American Roman Catholic poet of his generation. Today he is remembered only for the poem that made him instantly famous, Trees. photosynthesis. There's a place in town not far from where I live in Berlin, Germany, an intersection with a little square surrounded by busy streets, and in the middle of it stands a tree, a plane tree, or plantanus, which is related to the American sycamore, with a wide crown and long high branches and thick bushy leafage and a strong wide trunk. Placed around it in a circle, there are benches, and people are always sitting there having lunch, having a rest from shopping, meeting friends, and they always sit facing the tree, their backs to the busy streets and the world around them. I sit there myself at times. In the busy rush of town, there is a kind of peace here and a kind of benevolence, as if the universe smiled down upon this place, as if the tree were God's way of comforting us, calming us, restoring to us some kind of peace and energy and resolve, as if it were God's generous gift to us. Sometimes, looking at this tree, I wonder if a tree is a kind of divine message to us all. Its roots are grounded deep in the earth to keep it from tipping over. We, too, need some kind of firm foundation, our family, our nation, the values and beliefs we hold dear, these are the things that keep us going and nourish us. The trunk is our resilience. 
We all have different ways to weather the storms of life. Some of us bend in the wind and snap back. Others are stalwart and unbending. But we all have our ways of standing fast, be it some inner strength or our dedication to something we love, family and friendship, honor and ambition, art and introspection, whatever is at the heart of what makes us who we are. The leaves are little green miracles, wonders of invisible life. Photosynthesis is completely intangible, something you can't see or feel. Invisible, weightless light kisses the leaves and is transformed into something physical, sap and wood and bark. This transformation of almost nothing into very much something is like how we think. Thoughts and ideas enter our minds, seeping in from newspapers and TV, from discussions and rumors, from school lessons and books. Then we act upon them. We vote a certain way because of what we think. We dedicate our time to learning certain subjects. We talk to our loved ones in certain ways. We go to war or save our money or move to another place or do something we think will give us happiness because of ideas that come from the outside and are turned into physical, tangible acts. Invisible ideas go through the photosynthesis of our minds to come out real and change the world. And another thing about trees, they strive ever upward, as if reaching toward heaven, as if they are thinking to themselves, if I just keep going, I can one day touch the sky. I will one day sniff at the smells of space. They don't know that they can never grow that tall, and so they keep pointing, reaching heavenward just as we keep striving to lead better lives, as long as we believe it might be possible. My father was not that much of a nature guy. He didn't spend too much time camping or hiking or at the beach. But in the margin of this poem, he wrote, This was my favorite when young. Still is.